What's up guys, I wanted to give you a performance review for Samsung's latest flagship device, the Galaxy S4. Now in this video, I'm going to be doing general performance and that's going to include stuff like UI transitions, app opening, multitasking and just the general speed of the device. Now right at the end, I'll be running these benchmarks. So if you just want to see benchmark scores, you can go ahead and skip there right now. In terms of gaming and browser performance, I'll be leaving those to a different video so I can go in more detail and not make this one too long. So let's go ahead and dive in. So underneath the hood of the Galaxy S4 is a Snapdragon 600 and this is a 1.9 GHz quad core CPU coupled with the Adreno 320 GPU and it also has 2 GB of RAM. Now what these specs mean is it should be right at the top of the speed and performance charts. When I first turned the device on I've got to say I was a little bit disappointed. I was encountering random bits of lag when opening and closing apps. Since then Samsung has pushed a 76 MB update and I've got to say they pretty much eradicated all the, the lag completely. It's now very, very smooth. I should also know that I've turned off a lot of these gimmicky features that I really don't use like air view and air gesture, smart stay, smart scroll. And I've got to say when you turn some of this stuff off, the device does get a lot smoother as well. So uh, it'll, it's taking up resources if you don't use them. So uh, turn them off if you're not using them. In terms of the RAM, if I uh, quickly open up the RAM, you can see I've got no recent apps. And out of the two gigabytes I said, 1.78 is usable and it's already using up 780 megabytes in TouchWiz and Android processes, my apps and stuff like that that's open. And if you have some of this other stuff like AirView open, it'll take up more RAM and it might slow your device down. But uh, like I said, Samsung pretty much cleared out any of the lag problems with the update. It's a shame they didn't just release it like that because you know it was annoying nonetheless. In terms of transitions on the home screen, you're really not going to get any lag, you know, it's 1.9 gigahertz, there's no problems, I haven't seen any um, reloading of the launcher either when I have lots of apps open, but we'll test that in a bit, and you can see it's all very smooth as you expect, you can kind of pan through these really quickly, you can see there, no problems with lag there. Let's open up a few apps, so you can see I've got nothing open in my recents, we'll close the task manager. And uh, see if you can see any lags in the transitions, like I said it's a lot better, but I still do notice maybe 1% of the time that some of the transitions do slightly slow down. So uh, we'll open up Tap Talk. Nice and smooth there, very quick loading, no problems. Facebook, you can just see the 1.9 gigahertz makes this very quick and the scrolling in Facebook is very good. It's usually quite a heavy thing when there's lots of pictures. The Galaxy S4, as you can see, pretty much handles it no problem. It's very, very smooth, so uh, that's good to see. Open up uh, Google Plus, again, very smooth. Very smooth transitions to open and close the apps, Falcon Pro, very quick. We'll be testing out this versus other phones in a different video, but you can see here, if you've seen any lag in the Galaxy S4 beforehand, the update pretty much fixed it, no problems. You can see there's been uh, no lags whatsoever so far, so that's nice to see, right? And that's how it should be on a device of this standard, so uh, yeah. Email here, I've opened up quite a few apps here. We'll open up the uh, camera and just test out that speed. So one, two, three, go. So what was that? Probably about two seconds to open up the camera. Pretty speedy as you'd expect. So we'll just open up a few more apps and see if we can get it to slow down at all. We'll use this uh, bottom row. Open up the phone. No problems there. Contacts. Now there's one thing with this physical home button. Sometimes you know you have to press it and it seems a little bit slower. I have turned off S Voice, but just because it's physical button that you ha actually have to press, it seems like it uh, takes probably a second longer than my Galaxy than my uh, Nexus 4 to get back to the home screen. But uh, I guess that's normal. You can see there was no problems in the transitions there. We'll open up Maps because it's a little bit heavier. No problems there. Very quick on the loading speeds, I've got to say. Just as you'd expect from a 1.9 GHz Snapdragon 600. You see Maps does um, slow down a little bit, but that's pretty standard for Maps. You know, every uh, device slows down for Maps. It has to load a lot of roads and uh, a lot of information, but uh, the Galaxy S4 does handle it pretty damn well. And GPS lock on this device is fantastic. I guess that's due to the plastic body. It gets a lock very, very quickly. So, uh, yeah. And uh, we'll move on to multitasking. So I've got all these apps open and as you can see there's quite a few. If I just jump into the RAM manager here you can see I'm using 1.03 gigabytes out of the 1.78 gigabytes, 1.04 now, um, instead of the uh, 730 or 780 or however much I had when I had nothing open. So uh, let's test it out. So what we're looking for is just how fast we can switch between apps. So let's say we're in the messaging app and you're texting someone and you just want to quickly go out and jump into the Google Plus app. You can do that, it's ready to go, there was no reloading, which is nice to see. You can jump into your phone, you can quickly call someone, you can jump into your contacts. 
You can see it's all very quick and very fast, as you'd expect from any device with two gigabytes of RAM. Facebook didn't have to reload there, which is uh, nice to see. You can jump into the Play Store, you can quickly download an app, you can jump into your Tapper Talk, you can write back a post, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can see it's all very nice. You can jump back into your emails as well. I haven't got an account right now, but uh, you can see it's very, very good at multitasking, as you'd expect. Right now, you can see there it did actually have to reload the uh, browser tab, which is kind of annoying because then you have to reload and wait for it. But uh, it's not the end of the world, and I guess that's just how aggressive TouchWiz is at getting stuff out of memory. But most stuff does, in fact, stay into memory, you can see. So uh, pretty good multitasking on the Galaxy S4. So it's time to move on to the benchmarks. I've already cleared out the uh, app memory, so there's nothing running, and we'll start it off with Quadrant. So we'll hit Run. Here we go. The Galaxy S4 completely powers through Quadrant, so I'm not even going to bother skipping it because it's just too damn quick anyway. As always with benchmarks, guys, take them with a pinch of salt. They're not always accurate. They can change after pretty much three or four runs. And, you know, it doesn't always equal real-world performance, so uh, just take that into account. I mean, the Nexus 4 on Quadrant scores about 5,000, but it's still one of the smoothest devices I've ever used, so uh, yeah. Pretty solid FPS right now with uh, Locked on 60 on the Planet Test. 40, 39 on the DNA. And we're done, so we'll hit yes. And you can see it scores a massive 12,188. Very, very good. The processor alone scores like 7,500 points and then the other stuff kind of a uh, much smaller version. So you can just see how good the Snapdragon 600 is at 1.9 gigahertz. Hopefully you can see the uh, breakdown of the scores if you want to. I'll quickly zoom in so you can uh, see that there. You can see the 2D, the memory scores, all the scores are very good and you can just see how well this device performs in Quadrant. One of the highest scores I've actually ever seen, so uh, yeah. We'll move on, we'll just quickly close this out and we'll try and 2-2. Now this is probably one of the more reliable benchmarks, the numbers don't always change. You can see my previous test was 24-129 which is very good, but we'll do a start test anyway. I will skip this one guys because it is very, very long. So, yeah. And we're done, guys. And actually, I have to say the Galaxy S4 got through that very quickly, quicker than any other device I've used. And you can see it scores 24,506, which is my best score. Very good scores in every department. You can see the CPU, GPU, RAM, and I.O. scores are very good. And you can also see the uh, frequency that it was at. It was at 1890 times 4 and at 1080p as well. So we'll just submit this, and we'll check it out in the whole ranking of stuff. Hit the chart here. And we'll just go to the bar chart. So you can see uh, mine is just under the Galaxy S4 where it thinks it should be. I don't actually know uh, what it thinks it should be. Whoops, we'll uh, go to the list. We'll hit compare. So this is what it should get. And this is what mine got. So not too far away, really. I got 24506 and they got 24894. So it's probably capable probably capable of about 25,000 points on Intuitu. Very, very good score for any device. It's right at the top of the chain, as you'd expect. Moving on, we'll check out Limpack. This is a really kind of a quick one. Let's test the uh, single-threaded performance. 263, 284, 283. 284, pretty much around that area. We'll check out the uh, multi thread 595, 770, 727, 617. So it's kind of all over the place, as you can see. Sometimes in the 700, sometimes in the 500, sometimes in the 6. But you can see those numbers are still very high. They're still very, very good performance, especially in around 700. You can see I'm getting inconsistent results a lot. But uh, yeah. You can tap this all day and you'll probably just pick up different numbers. I mean, there was 788 right there. So uh, there you go. We'll close that one out. We'll run Geekbench. Now, Geekbench is predominantly a CPU benchmark, but it's probably the best CPU benchmark you can run. So we'll hit run and I'll skip to the end. And we're back and you can see it scores 3,119, which is a very, very high score. It's one of the highest I've seen. So it just shows you how strong the Snapdragon 600 at 1.9 gigahertz really is. If we hit the compare device, nothing is even close. The Nexus 4 scores 2,000. A custom Nexus 4 can probably score 2,500, but you can see it's still not touching the 3,100 that the uh, Galaxy S4 is hitting. So an absolute crazy, crazy CPU score right there. Moving on to 3D Mark, which is a uh, obviously a 3D uh, test. We're not going to run them both here because it's uh, kind of long, right? So we're just going to run the extreme version and see how it does. So we'll run... Uh, 
the extreme version and, and we're back and you can see it scores 6820 again this was the extreme test so this is the one that's rendered at 1080p it does better than their galaxy s4 did you can see the uh the green ones are the ones that score higher much higher in the physics test which is kind of interesting 38.7 versus their 31.3 and their Galaxy S4 scored 6,652, mine scored 6,820. If we check that out in the uh, device channel, you can see for the extreme version, it is square at the top. So very good GPU performance from the Adreno 320 in the Galaxy S4. So it should be absolutely amazing in games. We'll test that out on another video. Let's move on. So lastly, we've got Valemo. So here we go with this one, hit accept. You can see I've never actually run this on here before. I'm not going to run the, the uh, Metal run. I'm just going to run the HTML5 one so we can see what it gets. No, we don't want a browser explanation. And on Valemo, we've scored 2091. We'll test this against the other devices. So we'll hit yes here and uh, let it load up. Here we go. Tap the scores. You can see my device, or the Galaxy S4, I should say, is right at the top, beating out everything else. You can see this uh, little kind of orange line you can see it's just smashing every other device that's currently listed so there you have it guys the galaxy s4 is definitely the top of the benchmarks it kills every benchmark you put it through very high numbers very high scores as you'd expect from the snapdragon 600 at 1.9 gigahertz and the adreno 320 gpu in terms of its general performance yes it's very quick 99 percent of the time i do feel like it could be a little bit quicker and maybe it will be when samsung does some updates i don't know i do feel like sometimes it gets some random slowdowns which it really shouldn't especially as we've seen the stupidly high benchmark numbers nonetheless it's a very very good performing device peace out